Today I'm applying for my BC PPS exam. This has been a long time coming. I've been working towards this since I graduated in 2019 and started my residency, but it has been on my list of things that I wanted to do. I call it my professional bucket list for even longer than that. It was something that I wanted to do as a student and I'm finally to the point that I can apply. So for those that don't know, BCPPS stands for Board Certified Pediatric Pharmacy Specialist. There are a lot of requirements in order to get this certification. So this certification is through the Board of Pharmacy Specialties and there are many different specialties out there. I think they have like 13 different certifications that they do through them right now. You can get certified in other things with other organizations, but definitely BPS certifications is the most common thing that I see pharmacists get. So for the pediatric one specifically, you have several options in order to meet the requirements to get certified. Number one, you can do a PGY-1 and then a PGY-2 in pediatrics. I did not do that. I did the second option, which is to do a PGY-1 and then do two additional years working more than 50% of your time in pediatrics. As of now, ASHP does not distinguish the difference between any sort of PGY-1. So other than like community and then there's some ambulatory care now popping up and there's also some management situations that they'll show up as PGY-1s, but for the most part for like your general clinical specialty areas, they don't distinguish whether or not, you know, you're emphasized in pediatrics, which is what I was doing because I was at a pediatric hospital. So that doesn't actually matter to them, even though I had just peds experience in my PGY-1, doesn't change the hour requirements or the time requirements of doing pediatrics after residency. And then your third option is to work four years, spending more than 50% of your time in pediatrics within the last seven years before you apply for the exam. With all of that out of the way, I have finally met my requirements. So I am three years out of school now. I did a year of residency, worked two years. I've actually changed jobs and not working solely in pediatrics anymore. I'm still spending a good chunk of my time in investigational drug service pharmacy, working with pediatric studies, mainly because I'm interested in peds and the person opposite of me is not. So she's just like, here's all the peds studies. I'm doing a lot of peds narrow right now, which makes me super excited, but that is a totally different subject. So let's just apply for the exam. This has been a pain in the rear because I signed up and was like, oh, I'll just get the login stuff. I'll be all good and ready. And then I couldn't log in yesterday once I got everything that I needed. So what do you need to apply for the exam? Other than those requirements that I already told you about, about like your time commitment, your residency commitment, all of those fun things. You also need some documents. So number one is your license. Makes sense, you need to have a pharmacist license in order to be a pharmacy specialist of any kind. Number two, if you did a residency, you need your residency certificate to prove that you did your residency. And for those like myself who are using some sort of experience-based requirement, so my two years of peds experience, I had to get letters from my managers saying yes, that I did this, I spent more than 50% of my time in pediatrics. I actually had to get letters from three different managers in order to make this happen because one of my managers changed in my first job and then I just changed jobs. And like I said, recently I've been doing more than 50% of my work in pediatrics easily because we've had a lot of new peds studies. So it worked out perfectly that I'm now well over my two year commitment. Well, not well over, I'm barely over, but I am over my two year commitment. So either way, I've met the requirements. There's also a $600 application fee. So you have to fill out all the application with, you know, like your personal info, your legal name. You want to make sure that matches whatever is on your license because you're gonna have to take that to the testing center. It's all got to match up perfectly. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Back to applying. We're going to apply now. So it asks for your initial license date. I have mine in there. I'm going to like double check that it's correct. I'm like 99% sure that is right because I looked it up the other day. Yes. I had it correct. Perfect. So after I've certified that, yes, that's my application date. Yes, I have all the paperwork. Apparently you can't, once you're in here, you can't go back out. So make sure you have all of your documents ahead of time in PDF or JPEG form. They tell you that before you go in, but I'm going to select pediatric pharmacy here. I'm not showing you guys the window because it has my personal information on it and you guys don't need to see that. So I certified I was doing the pediatric pharmacy exam and then it shows that the next cycle is open. So this window ends on 8-3, it is 8-2. So I'm like just squeaking by. And then the exam window is from September 5th through September 26th. 
So I'm going to select that one. So for those of you who are interested in the spring exam, because fall exam will be closed by the time this video goes up, the registration period for the next exam in the spring will be January 4th and then it will close March 18th. So you have a good window there. So now it's gathering eligibility information and doing the little spoolie thing. So then it shows all of the different options for your eligibility. So is my eligibility route four years of practice, the PGY one plus two years, which is what I'm going to select or a PGY two. Testing country is the United States. So the next screen is requiring my residency. So PGY one residency. Then it asks for major preceptor, so I'm going to put my program director. I thought maybe her credentials would be on here, but they're not, so we're gonna have to check my CV because she has lots of credentials. She's a very smart lady. And then it just asks for your start date and your end date. That was, I did not start in 2022. That, that is not correct. 2019, let's try that instead. And then I ended in the lovely 2020, you gotta love it. And then I am able to add a file that shows my residency certificate. So you can also do, if you don't have your residency certificate, it says you could do a letter of completion or a residency certificate. And for those who are like trying to apply for exams and then your residency is gonna end, it does give you the option to upload a letter from your preceptor verifying that you are currently enrolled in the program in your expected completion date. That looks good. So after I've added my residency, now it wants my degree and where I got that from. So I went to the University of Missouri, Kansas City School of Pharmacy. Next is to add my license, which I already told you guys about. So registered pharmacist license, they want my license number. As much as I get asked for my license number, you would think I have it memorized, but I, I don't have to tell them what state it is. I'm licensed in Missouri and then my license expiration date, which is actually approaching. So that's just another lovely fee that I'm going to get to pay in October. Well, before October, because I'm going to need to submit that before it expires in October. And then I have to add a copy of my license, which I was prepared for already. So the next section is gonna take some time, so I'm probably gonna turn the camera off not to waste your guys' time, but it's the practice experience section. And so it has your estimated practice experiences from each of the domains. So practice management, practice management and medication safety, information management, research, education, public health, patient, advocacy and other pharmacy activities and then they give you all of your like different domains and what is included in that. I'm going to have to put those percentages in for both years and what dates those years occurred and then for each year of my practice experience I have to put who my employer was, my job title, all of that fun stuff. So here we go. Okay I just finished all of the requirements of my practice experience which took probably 15 minutes to type everything out because I had multiple managers and I was having to put their emails in, exactly what dates I was in, contact information for them, and then uploaded my three letters that say, yes, I did the things that I'm supposed to do in order to take this exam. So after you finish your practice experience, the next thing to ask if you want to do any special accommodations under the Americans with Disabilities Act. I don't have any of those, so I will select no. And then it has a nice little checklist for you at the end. And then electronic signature of my application. And last but not least, the $600 application fee. Everybody's favorite. So I'm gonna pause the video here so I can get my credit card out because you guys don't need that information and I'll be right back. That's it, I just put that in and then it told me that they're going to review my profile within 20 days and let me know if I meet the eligibility requirements and if I do, then I will be able to apply for the exam. So that's it, thank you guys for applying to the exam with me. You guys are gonna be seeing a lot of content talking about me studying, how I'm studying, the exam process, all of that fun stuff. So if you are interested in learning more about becoming a board certified pharmacist, make sure that you hit that subscribe button for more content about the exam. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!